Hey guys, what's up? It's Lindsay again. Welcome back to my channel. I have not filmed, sat down, and filmed a YouTube video on my camera in so long. So yeah, hi if you're new here. My name is Lindsay. I recently moved to Italy for fashion school for my master's in fashion. I have a bachelor of design in fashion communications. And yeah, this is just gonna be my story of like how I got here, what school I go to, what I'm studying, my background, applying, how I'm liking where I'm living, and all that. If you have any additional questions, you can DM me on Instagram or leave them in the comments here. Let's just get into the video. So I will start with my story time background of studying abroad. So, okay, sorry, I had to switch memory cards. So my story of my undergrad studying abroad. I always want to study abroad. That's kind of why I chose Ryerson. So I'm Canadian. I went to Ryerson University or Toronto Metropolitan University for fashion communication. So I have a Bachelor of Design. And in my third year, I was going to study abroad and I would have, I applied early 2020. So obviously it got canceled. I applied to go to Australia. Yeah, I was gonna go to Brisbane, Australia in the winter semester of 2021. So January to like June or something. Got canceled, obviously. And then I was like, okay, I actually really want to study abroad. And I reapplied, meaning I would have had to do a fifth a fifth year um, if I did that because my thesis would have had to take a full year so I just wouldn't have been able to do that. I would have studied abroad my fourth year because of COVID it would have been delayed. So I would have had to take a fifth year to do my thesis in a full like consecutive year. So semester one, semester two, like consecutively. Um, Cause when you study abroad, you go for a semester. So obviously that would have messed it up. I was gonna go to Amsterdam, AMFI, Amsterdam Fashion Institute. I was so excited. I got in, that was like my top choice. It's like a hard one to get into and I didn't think I would be chosen to get in. Got in, knew that in April, 2021, was supposed to go in January, 2022. So earlier this year, till so June, 2022. It got canceled last October. And then a few people actually got to go in exchange to other places, but my school, Amsterdam, wasn't allowing people. It was like a whole mess with like the Canadian government regulations and like letting people go abroad for essential, essential or non-essential reasons. So mine got canceled and that really sucked. So I just stayed in my thesis program and finished in four years like I would have in the first place without COVID messing things up. So I graduated my undergrad from Toronto Metropolitan University, Ryerson University in June 2022 with a Bachelor of Design in Fashion Communication. Also actually, for study abroad, um, my school, the first actually study abroad program that they let, that they reopened after COVID was this one in Germany, Stuttgart, Germany at um, HDM. It's HDM, Hodder School de Midian uh, in Stuttgart, Germany, Stuttgart, Germany. And it was, a, it was a two week program starting like May like 7th to like the 21st and um, me and my friend Meg, after my Amsterdam got canceled last October, we applied in November to go to this Germany two-week thing because it was cheap, like we didn't have to pay any tuition. And I got a lot of funding for this um, from my school because they were really promoting like international activity for students to study because it, everything was just like reopened and stuff. So we applied, we got in like February and we planned to go, or we went May 7th to the 21st and then we went to Paris before. And it was just like a two week, like easy summer course kind of thing. I didn't get any credit because I was literally graduated. Other people did get credit for like an elective in the FCAD, Faculty Communication and Design in, at Ryerson. If you go to Ryerson, you can get a credit. It's just like a pass or fail. Well, I didn't get any credit. It wasn't hard school work. It was fun. You get to meet people, live in Germany for two weeks. We stayed at a hostel and yeah, we got to meet some German students who were really nice. It was just like a fun experience to like be able to study abroad a good amount of time for two weeks. And I think there was like 30 of us. How many of us were there? I think there was like about 30 of us. Canadian students. So it's nice to be with other Canadian students abroad. It was very easy. But yeah, we got to go to Paris before and I actually got about $1,300 from uh, TMU to, uh, to pay for like my flight and like accommodation and everything. It kind of covered everything. So it was kind of like a free trip to Europe, which was really cool. And then I met my family in Ireland for a week because my sister was finishing. She was finishing yeah, her degree there in Ireland. Then I went to Ireland for a week after. So it was a really nice trip. And while I was like in ending my, like the week, I literally finished my undergrad in like April. I was applying to Polymoda, which is the fashion school that I'm at right now, which is crazy because it literally was like the most hectic time of my life to like pack up, move back home, 
pack for Europe, apply, like it was ridiculous. I was in Europe for like a month of the month of May, pretty much, like May 3rd to the 28th. Um, so let's talk about Polymoda. So I knew if I didn't get to study abroad in my undergrad, I wanted to do a master's abroad and like soon because like I didn't know what else to do. I was like, if I graduate from Ryerson, I can't just like have my career be that. Like, and that's totally okay. Like, a lot of people just get a job after their undergrad. That's not uh, not normal, but I was like, I need to study abroad. I don't feel like complete if I don't. Not that I don't feel complete. I just felt like I needed something more. I wanted to study abroad for so long for like a good amount of time to get like that international schooling on my resume and to get the experience and like to actually like be somewhere for a long time and like learn somewhere else from other people. And especially fashion, the Canadian fashion industry is like non-existent. So I was like, I need to like leave the country to do something else. So what I did was after my exchange got canceled in October, 2021, I started looking at master's programs. And obviously I looked at like Polymoda, which is one I go to in Florence, Italy. I looked on the business of fashion list because my school, Ryerson or TMU, was on it for the undergrad list and I was looking at the masters and I was looking for something in like magazines because the- oh my god, there's so many things to explain. The program I was going to go to at Amsterdam was like branding and you basically get to make a magazine with a bunch of people and that's what I wanted to do and I feel like if I didn't have that experience, I didn't know what I want my, wanted my career to be so it was almost like essential I do something. I studied abroad somewhere just to learn more also, I just felt like my education, my academic career wasn't over because like I didn't know what I wanted to do in the fashion industry because I had like so many skills from TMU. Um, we learned like things from graphic design, sewing. Uh, photography, art direction, anyway. So when I was looking for a master's program, I wanted one that was broad enough that I could like learn different skills surrounding magazines. That was like my goal because I was gonna do a magazine at Amphi, like you basically make a magazine. So it's like, I want something similar to that. I was looking at like Central St. Martin's for fashion image making or something. Which is just, it doesn't sound exactly what I wanted. It was like photography and video production. And then I was looking at like marketing communication here at Polymoda as well. But it was more like marketing. I don't want to do like marketing, like finance stuff. And then I was looking at Institut de la Mode in Paris. But that was a two-year course. And that's like a lot of time commitment. Especially if I'm like going right after my undergrad. Like I know it's normal, pretty normal to do like at least a year or two years. Like mine's literally a nine month course. But I was like that kind of put me off and it wasn't the exact program I wanted. But the one here in Italy um, at Polymoda, which is in Florence, Italy. It is called Master of Fashion Art Direction with a part with in mentorship with Vogue Italia. Which is literally insane. Just knowing that like this school has so many good connections. They literally have a program in partnership with Gucci. Just like s such a well-reputed school that like I know even having Polymoda on my resume is gonna get me places. So I didn't just go for like that. I was like, this is like the perfect program. I wanna work in magazines. I wanna like create with people. I wanted a collaborative kind of environment. It's such a small school too, which was so like intriguing to me because I was like, small school is literally just a fashion school. Like that's all they have. It's not even an art school. It's like all fashion based. And like everyone just so from everywhere also. So that's really neat. It's just an international school. Obviously it's expensive. It's a private school, but I was saving up for exchange <laughs> at some point in my life. So I was like, I want to study abroad. I'll put my money towards this. So yeah, when I saw that, I was like, okay, it starts in October. Perfect timing after my undergrad. Cause like I didn't have my degree until like June. Perfect timing in the sense that like I'd have my degree, can apply in May. That's still five months before the program starts so I can get my visa and everything. So I literally applied right before I left for Europe in May. Was in Europe, was in Paris. And then when I was in Germany, I did my interview with the leading teacher here at Polymoda, which was so stressful because I was like kind of in school, kind of super busy stuff in Germany, like living in Germany for two weeks. Obviously you're gonna be busy. And I had still an internship that I was doing like weekly and had meetings and like the time difference and everything was just like a lot. So I had my interview, I think it went really well. I'm confident in my skills and my background. Cause a lot of people come into master's programs from so many different backgrounds. I felt like mine was very like in line with like that I would do well in this program. Not that like they look at people who have great credentials. You just need to have like a vision and like um, have a vision. You just need to be an interesting person who wants to make a difference in the fashion industry. It's kind of their motive, motif. You don't need to be, they're not gonna pick the most skilled people. They're gonna pick the most interesting people kind of thing. So I just kind of was like using my background in fashion to like get me. I'm just saying I was happy that I had a background in fashion because I feel like that gave me a leg up in the sense that like I knew how to do, I know it set me up well for this program. My 
degree set me up well for this program and um, my passion for like wanting to study abroad and like everything accumulated well in the sense that I felt like I'd be a good candidate for the program like I was very confident in the sense that I, I think I would get in just because of my background and whatever anyway um, I was just like like because it was the only program I applied for started in October my worst case scenario is I apply for another polymotor program that starts in like March but that would have been like so delayed I wouldn't have known to do for six months so I applied in May, had an interview. Um, pretty much if you apply, you get an interview because they just want to talk to you and like look at your application. The application, I had to do a portfolio. So I did my thesis project from my undergrad. That's why I waited till May to apply because I had most of my thesis project done. So I put that in my portfolio. Some other projects, you have to like answer some questions. Then you have the interview. And then I had the interview. They got back to me about a week later when I was in Ireland saying I got in. And I was like refreshing my email constantly. So I got in in May. And then you have to start the, the visa process. So yeah, that's where I am now is that in May, I applied to Polymoda, got in, knew I was going in October. And then came the application, the visa application and all that. And like figuring that out, figuring out housing. So yeah, that's my background in my study abroad like journey. This is like the third time I've been trying to study abroad. So here I am filming this in Italy. That's kind of weird. Um, If you want to hear more about me talk about like Amsterdam or like that process of exchange, I have a few vlogs where I like did like my interview with Ryerson or TMU. I think I vlogged like the day I did it, my interview, which is kind of sad to look back on because I really still wish I went to Amsterdam sometimes. But anyway, I would, if I went to Amsterdam, I wouldn't be here right now. So, so yeah, this is a nine month program and I have the op option to do a three month internship after I'm done. Um, so I'm hoping New York, I can do, I'm hoping I can do my three month internship after my nine months in New York. I have no idea the process yet. I haven't gotten there, barely have gotten into school yet. It's been a month since I've been here. It's just like everything takes time and whatever. So that's not even on my radar to like worry about. But anyway, yeah, so here I am in Italy living in my place that I live, living in my apartment with my roommates. Now I'm going to talk to you guys about my living situation quickly. Maybe I could do like a full video on like finding a place to live, but I feel like this is mostly just going to be me talking about like my schooling and stuff. But what I did was I went on Facebook. There's a Polymoda X Facebook group. I'm two girls who are doing a master's and we all connected, talked, talked about what we wanted in a place. It took us so long to search contact people and like get people to like believe us that we were like three students because we were literally from Canada, South Africa and India. We had to say we're three international students doing a master's in Polymoda, need somewhere to live, but we literally live in such a good location in Florence. Such a process but could not have asked for a better location, better roommates, better anything. I'm so happy where we are. Um, I can do a whole video on that if you want to know about like finding a place to live in Florence, tips because I, I have been through it. <laughs> Yeah, let me know if you want a whole video on that because I could do that. Okay, let's talk about Florence itself for a second. So yeah, Polymoda is in Florence. The campus is a literal Italian, Italian 19th century villa, which is kind of crazy. It's beautiful. That's the Villa Favard. And it's so, it's like close to the city center. So it's really close to walk to for me. I love Florence. It's beautiful. It's like calm enough of a city, but not overwhelming. Like everything's walkable. It's like perfect size of a city. It honestly could not have asked for a better place to live. I went to Milan, like I flew into Milan from Montreal, Canada. It's huge. It like, it gives me Toronto vibes and it's dirty. Not Toronto vibes. It's just like as big as Toronto. It's dirty. I've only been once, like I don't have much to say about it and I don't want to like make anyone upset. I just didn't really enjoy it. It's beautiful in like the sense of the, the Duomo and whatnot, but it's just really hectic and I just wasn't looking for hectic after living in Toronto for so long. I know New York is like hectic, but like New York is better organized than Toronto. Toronto's just a mess, I think. Not a mess, but it's just like Toronto, I need it, like you need a break from Toronto. I feel like I needed a break from like the high rise buildings, the concrete, everything. So looking out at like old buildings every day. It's really nice. I am very enjoying, I'm very much enjoying the change. Like I was so excited to go to Amsterdam because it looks so different from Toronto. The canals and everything and the Arno River. And Florence is beautiful. Everything's so beautiful. I just miss nature sometimes. Like it's very like concrete here. It's just like a lot of building stuff together. So there's not much like green space, um, which is something I kind of miss. Not a lot of public parks, which is kind of sad. Like when I was in Paris, there's so many trees. I really loved Paris, but here, like it's clean, it's nice. There's just not many parks, which I kind of miss. And that's one thing I don't like about the city here. Traveling wise, I'm going to Budapest this weekend. That's pretty fun to say. We've been to Cinque Terre, which was like a two hour train ride. And I was in Milan and like home with my parents when they dropped me off. And yeah, so I've been a few places in Italy. This is gonna be our first time leaving the country. Um, It's about an hour and a half flight, which is nuts. And then I'm going to see my sister in 
Wales later in November. And we're going to Venice for a school trip, which I'm so excited. I still really want to go to Rome and like Naples, the Amalfi Coast at some point, obviously, maybe like next summer. The better time because it's like October, even though it's literally 25 degrees every day, which is so hot for me as a Canadian. I'm, um, There's a lot to see in Europe, obviously. So I'm just hoping to travel as much as possible. Everyone's from different backgrounds in my program. I also talk more about the transition and like homesickness because that's a very real thing. Trust me, social anxiety is really bad sometimes. It's all, it's all worth it. You learn so much about yourself when you move abroad. And that is my video. Thank you guys for watching. This is kind of just like an, a life update. There is some good thrifting in Florence. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna do like a thrifting video. I did, I'm gonna post a TikTok. A lot of flea markets, but I found like one thrift store and a church thrift sale. I'm really proud of myself for like going thrifting and like finding stuff that makes me really happy to do because I love thrifting. Obviously you guys know if you watch my thrift hauls. Uh, thrift with me is from Value Village and Canada. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of my content, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And I will see you guys in my next video, hopefully very soon. I miss YouTube and making videos and editing them. Anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Bye.